Hi everyone, in this tutorial I'll be setting up PostHog with Next.js 13 using the app directory. The app directory is a new update to Next.js that changed the way PostHog needs to be implemented. It supports layout, server components, streaming, and component level data fetching. And this changes the way PostHog and a whole bunch of other libraries need to be implemented. So I'm going to show off how you can do that in this video. The first thing we need to do to create a Next.js 13 app with the app directory is run npx create next app at latest and then this will run us through some options. So we have to install the packages, name our package, we're just going to choose my app. Would you like to use TypeScript? You can, but we're going to choose no. Run through some defaults here and then when we get to would you like to use experimental app directory, we're going to choose yes. And then we're going to just press enter in the last option. And now it's going to create our Next.js app. So once that's done creating, we can go into the folder and we'll see that our pages directory no longer exists. We don't have a source directory. We just have this app directory. And inside this app directory, we have layout and page here and this replaces some of the other components that the pages directory was using in the past. So to add post hog to this, it's going to be slightly different. One big change between the app directory and the pages directory is that the app directory server side renders pages by default. That means we have to say when a page is client side and post hog needs to be initialized on the client side. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a .env .local file and this is where our secrets are going to go. We're going to create a secret for next underscore public underscore post hog key and we're going to create one called next public post hog host and then we're going to go over to a new post hog project here we're going to get our code and we're going to just add this in here. We're using app.postdog.com and we're just going to save that. So now we have our postdog keys here. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a providers file. So in the app directory, we're going to create a file called providers.js. And this is where we will initialize post hog. So we'll use the, the use client declaration here to let Next.js know that this is a client side file. And then we're going to import post hog, which we need to install CD my app. And now we can install this install post hog JS. Cool. And then we are going to import post hog here from posthog.js and we're also going to import the posthog provider. So this is traditionally how we do things with the pages directory is we use the posthog provider, but for the app directory, we need a bit of a different way to initialize this. So we're going to get that from the react folder and then we're going to still check if the type of the window is not undefined. And if this is the case, we're going to initialize post hog dot it, and we're going to use the process dot env dot next underscore public post hog API key. Let's check that it's the right one. It's next public API key. And then we will use the API host and it'll be the next public post hog host and the public makes it show up on public facing code. So if you want to hide these, you're going to have to use a different structure, but we don't mind these being public. These are public write only keys. So we don't mind these values being public. And then we'll just close this out here and this should be good. And then we are going to export a, a function here, default function, and we're gonna name it ph provider. 
so it has a different name than the provider that we are setting it up inside of it. It's going to take children components and it's going to return the post hog provider with a client set to post hog and then the children within it. So we're going to save that. And next we're going to go into the layout.js file. And in this file, we're going to import providers from providers, oops. And then we are going to wrap our body here in the providers component, oops. And we're gonna do this. And so this means that our post hoc provider will be wrapping this layout body component. So we'll save that and then we'll run our app for the first time, npm run dev. And then we'll go to localhost and see that some events are coming in. So in our localhost, we can refresh the page a couple times. We can click around. We can click, even click a link. And then we'll go back to our postdoc ingestion wizard. We'll click continue. It'll listen for events here and we'll see that it successfully sent events. We can turn on or off session recordings and auto capture here, but we'll just leave them both on and then we'll press continue. And then you'll see here that we have a couple page view events, a page leave events and a link click. So that's postdoc auto capturing and session recordings set up. Next, we can set up custom events. One thing about Next.js is that it acts as a single page app and that means we're going to have to manually capture page view events on each page. And this will allow us to show off custom events as well. To do this, we're going to need some pages here. So in our app folder, we're going to create a new folder called about. And in this, we're going to create a page called page.js and this will represent a page. And then this is going to be a very simple page with one link and that link just goes back to the home page. And we will write this here, about page. So I'm just gonna make it named about. And then this is just going to return a basic, uh, very basic component about. And then we'll have a link here at the bottom and this link will go to go to home. And then we'll run that out. And we'll also make sure that we close out the component. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to fix up this home page. Basically gonna delete everything here. We'll even delete this. We don't really care about this too much. Delete these as well. And then we will just have the home page have a link to the about page. Link href equals about, go to about, we'll import link. Yeah, so that's great there. We have our two pages here. So now we can go back to our app and go between them. So back in our app, it looks really ugly in dark mode, but we can go to the about page and now we're on the about page. We can go back to the home page and we're on the home page. And you'll actually see if you go back to your post hog instance here, that we'll get auto captured link clicks between the about and home page, but it won't track the page views between them. So we need to set those up manually. So to set up page view custom event capture, we're gonna go back into our providers.js file and we're going to set up quite a bit of stuff here. So we're going to import use path name and also uh, use search params. Use search params. And this is going to be from next slash navigation. And then we are also going to import use effect. And then we're going to set up in this provider function our check for if the page changes. So const path name equals use path name and search params equals search params. And then we're going to use effect here and we're going to check if there is a path name. 
then we'll create a URL. Let URL equals window.origin because we want the entire URL. So that includes the origin and then path name. And then if search params to string, then URL equals URL plus the search params here. So this allows us to keep the search params if we have them in the URL and capture those as well. And then we will posthog.capture a page view event where the current URL, current URL underscore equals URL. And we'll get rid of this. And we'll close out this use effect with checks for the path name and search params. And we will fix this up here too. I think we have one extra one here. So this is checking if a path name exists and if this path name changes and then creating the URL if so, and then capturing that URL as a page view event and that's on every page load. So I will save this and we'll head back to our app here. So we're on the home page, and we'll click about. And now when we go back to Postog, we should see a about page page view. So back in Postog, you'll see here, this is kind of our session. We have the page view, and then we click the link to go to the about page, and then we have a page view on the about page. So this is page views working. It's a bit different than the Next.js pages directory setup, but it works for the app directory as well. So by default, Next.js server renders the components. So this is a server rendered component, meaning that if we wanted to use the post hog provider in this component, we couldn't because that is a client side instance of post hog. If we want to create a server side instance of post hog, we first have to install post hog node, which is the server side version of post hog. So npm install post hog node. And then in the app directory, we will create a file called posthog.js. And then in here, we'll import the posthog client from posthog node. And we will export the posthog client that's set up. So we'll create a function called posthog client. And this will initialize postdoc. So we have it here, const postdoc client equals new postdoc. And then we can just get the values. And then this will return the postdoc client. So we can use this to capture custom events or feature flags, which we'll show next. If we wanted to capture a custom event from our about page, for example, what we can do now is we can import the post hog client from the post hog file. And here we'll just set up the post hog client. So this will just get the post hog client with all the details we set up in there. And then we can run post hog dot capture. We'll remove this post hog client dot capture. And then we need a distinct ID for this. And we'll just use my email because we haven't set up user identification here. And the event will be about page view, but you can make that any value you want. And then we'll run the app one more time. We'll go back to our about page and we'll refresh. And then when we go back to post hog, we should see a event come in here. It might take a little while as we're a new user. And after a little while, you'll see we have the custom about page viewed event here from my email and the source being post hog node. So that's the server side post hog instantiation working for us. And we can also use it to set up feature flags. So to set up feature flags, we're going to go to the feature flag tab. We're going to create a new flag. 
the flag is going to be called main CTA and we're going to make sure to roll this out to 100% of users and press save and then we will copy this here and we'll head back to our postdoc instance and in here there's some slightly different patterns to use because of the app directory so we're going to create a function called get data where we don't use get static props anymore so it's called get data and this function we're going to create a postdoc client equals postdoc client and then we're going to get the flags for a specific user so if you have the user's id then you can use that but we will just use my id so we'll do this we'll do ian at postdoc.com and then we'll just return the flags for this function and in our main component, we'll change it to be an async component because we need to wait for the data to, to be gotten. And then we will let the flags be const flags equals await get data. And then we will check the specific flag basically in the component and render CTA if so. So we'll check the flags main CTA and then this will show a link href equals HTTP postdoc.com go to postdoc so we'll save that and now we can head back to our site and we should see this CTA appear So back in our site, we do see this go to postdoc with a link to postdoc here, which is great. And we can also test that the feature flag works if we turn it off. So we can go back to our feature flag, we can click disable feature flag. And then when we go back to our site, we'll see that the go to postdoc CTA disappeared. So this is a very basic implementation of feature flags. There's a lot more you can do with this, but it shows how feature flags work with the app directory. So that's all for how to set up Postog with the Next.js 13 app directory. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe for more videos like this. And if you wanna see the written version of this tutorial or more tutorials about Postog, go to postog.com slash tutorials. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.